Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So earlier today, 50, the founder of Apocalyptic Apes and Peachy from Ledger, Held a space about NFT and crypto security, everything you need to know about Web3 and storing things on a hardware wallet, debunking some myths, and just giving some general security practices unrelated to even Ledger, but just how to secure yourself and be safe. And this is one of those things that I was just going to skip because, you know, you've been in the space, you've been dabbling with these things, you've tried all these different things, and you're like, eh, I really don't need to listen to a basic introductory to Ledger and hardware wallet and security. However, I won't lie, the main reason why I clicked it and went into the space is because I'm just a big fan of the A-Apes. They are very cool to hang out with, love their spaces. So I said, all right, let me see what's going on in here. And much to my surprise, even I learned some very interesting things, including the number one weakness of Ledger and how to avoid a fatal mistake. So today, I'm gonna share all of that with you. So this was about a two and a half, three hour space. At least that's how long I was in it before my battery died. So I don't even know how long they ended up going on. However, I can say at any given time, there was at least 100 people in the room and it was very active information was being given out. And the thing that I really love about it, although this was a fairly technical subject, you know, protecting your hard earned assets, however, They did not use a lot of technical words and a lot of technical terms. They just put it in layman terms. So anyone, any level within the crypto journey could have appreciated all of this. And the number one thing that as far as what I wanted to say is that it is definitely a good idea to have a hardware wallet. It's just one extra level of security. However, it is not impenetrable. It is not the bulletproof fix that a lot of people might have you think there is fatal weaknesses and the number one weakness as far as what really compromises these things is the human element and i'm not just going to end it there but just giving you a couple examples there are so many ways that human error just absolutely ruins the security of a hardware wallet if you're not familiar a hardware wallet is sort of like a thumb drive at least that's how it looks And a lot of people have the misconception that the NFTs and the crypto are stored on it. However, the only thing that is stored on it are the private keys or that recovery phrase that is used to sign on transactions. And that is what's really stored on there. The current model and most popular wallet, I should say, is the MetaMask wallet on Ethereum. And on Solana, it is Phantom. And the issue with those is the seed phrase is actually in that wallet, which is connected to the internet. And that is why it's called a hot wallet. So a ledger device is a cold wallet, always offline with all those information. And it only connects when you want to use it, when you want to sign a transaction. Other than that, it sits in your desk, your pocket, wherever you want to put it, just out of harm's way. And there is no way of someone just hacking on to your computer and then end up stealing all your assets because at the end of the day, any transaction that you make, you're going to have to sign. However, a lot of error takes place for the simple fact that some people just do not pay attention to what they're signing. And then, of course, that is how things get sent out. You give blind access to certain things, especially over on Ethereum, where you just give something permission to do whatever they want. And a lot of the times they don't even do it immediately. They do it at some point down the line after they compromise a whole bunch of wallets. But That is not really Ledger's fault or MetaMask's fault or any other wallet's fault. That is human error, not paying attention to what's being read. And a lot of times how this happens is people are just doing these different things while they're trying to multitask. And I'm a firm believer of there is no such thing as multitasking. And if you look it up, do the research, hardcore stuff, what happens is people that are quote unquote great multitaskers, which I am not. So full disclosure, I'm putting that out there right now. I'm pretty well known that I'm a horrible multitasker. And my defense is that no one can really multitask. What happens is if you do the studies and the research, it's people that are good at switching between tasks, but nobody really does two tasks at the same time. And when you're switching between tasks, you're really not doing 100% in either area. However, some people are just very good at doing it. Me, on the other hand, when I switch tasks, it takes me forever to start back that engine and warm up and catch up to speed. So as far as doing crypto transactions, signing things, reading all of these complicated receipts, what have you, while you're cooking and you're on the phone, you're texting, Netflix is on in the background and kids are running around, all sorts of different things. Well, that is how errors tend to happen. 
But that is not the only thing. I'm not just going to leave you hanging and say, oh, well, this whole episode is about signing things. Well, the number one thing that I learned during this whole thing is that the Ledger device actually has some updates. When you connect to the Ledger Live app, it'll tell you that you need to update your firmware and so forth, give you the new update with security patches. And what a lot of people tend to do is miss a lot of those, especially if you are someone who just sets it and forgets it. You know, you park your NFTs and your crypto on it, and you might have other ones that you're using more actively or a MetaMask that you're using actively, but the valuable things that you don't want to look on for a while, you know, you're not selling those. You just put them in the ledger and then call it a day. Well, what a lot of the times ends up happening is since those things are never being connected, they miss updates and they update those firmware and all that security thing as i just said all the patches when they find problems or any kind of glitches that are in the system as far as making it crash and so forth or upgrading the types of apps and tokens that can go on this thing well if you missed a bunch of them let's say you missed five six seven eight updates and these updates roll out pretty regularly and you happen to lose your seed phrase, which I'm going to get to in a second as to why the seed phrase thing is a hot topic for me. But so you happen to not have that seed phrase and you don't use it for so long. So you might not even realize you have misplaced it, it has been damaged, burned, lost, corroded, you name it. However, when it comes now to update time, you connect to Ledger, Ledger Live, you might not have used this thing in a couple years, and you might see that it has to do five or six updates. No big deal, right? Your cell phone does that all the time. Well, here's the thing. With this, once it's doing multiple updates, each time it does an update, there is a possibility that the thing basically misfires and has to be reset. So meaning that it's during the update process and there's some sort of stall or issue or glitch or whatever. And in doing so, you're going to have to reset and then have to recover using the security phrase. And where a lot of people are going wrong is that if they never had that security phrase because this is something that they don't use very often. They don't reset it. And that's the only time that you'll ever have to use it is when you're setting up that wallet and plugging it into a new ledger. So it has to go nowhere else. You're not putting this into MetaMask. You're not putting this into any kind of application or website or anything of that nature. The only time you're using that seed phrase is to set up a new Ledger hardware wallet and you're going to put it directly onto the device, not even into Ledger Live, the app on the computer, because the authentic version, the official version that Ledger puts out, it never asks you for your seed phrase. So if you want to know if you have a bootleg copy of the software, which is pretty rare at this point. They actually said that uh, there has been some fraudulent ones in the past in the Microsoft store. However, they don't have a official one on the Microsoft store. So that is how a lot of these uh, frauds were taking place. And when you connect it and then it asks you, what is your seed phrase? Well, the real one does not do that. So that's even said there up front when you're setting up the ledger right in those steps and prompts, it tells you that the Ledger Live apps never asks you for that. But going back to this whole thing, once those updates are finally being made and you're getting ready to do all those five, six, if it misfires and then it's going to have to reset, it's going to erase everything. And the only way to recover all that information is by using the seed phrase or the recovery phrase to bring everything back up. And the issue with that is if you have lost it and then basically you are SOL, as they say, just completely out of luck. There is nothing anyone can do, not Ledger, not Ethereum, not any kind of coder or hacker or anything, white hat hacker, you know, the good guys. So there is that human element that the number one thing, yes, it might be secure. Yes, it is a lot harder to steal from that. But if you lose that seed phrase. So at that same time, speaking about seed phrase, as I said, this whole recovery phrase, I was able to air my grievances. If you've listened to any of my episodes and I say, well, the, my big issue, the number one security flaw that I personally think is with these Ledger wallets is it comes with that big orange envelope that has those recovery phrase cards with the 24 slots. And right there on it says Ledger recovery phrase. I'm like, that is a huge security risk. So with that said, I wanted to say that, you know, I think that is kind of a harm's way that you're doing that. And he said that could be a security flaw. However, we that de we designed that so that way someone knows that as they're setting this thing up, they have to write it down right away. Now, if they choose to transfer it into another a book or another form of offline recording, such as etching it into metal or stone or something that cannot corrode, that won't be damaged in fires and so forth, or just writing on a piece of paper, laminating it, putting it in a fire and waterproof bag, whatever it might be. Well, those are the types of things 
that is important. However, that card that comes there is just to really prompt the person, let them know, stop, this is very important, write it down, and you need this. So in doing so, it was very interesting. We start to have all sorts of discussions about the proper way of recovery phrases, the different types, such as guardian contracts. And the guardian contract is basically like the argent wallet. If you listen to episode number 243 and 246, I talk about the argent wallet, especially the second half of 246. And rather than using seed phrases, they have guardian. So long story short, if you have a ledger, a treasure, or another Argent user, another Argent wallet, you can say put three of these as the guardians. And in order to recover, let's say I damage mine, I can't access the device that it is on, or I forget how to log on, whatever it might be, I can use two of those three guardians or whatever number I set. Let's say it's five, then I need three of the five, just one more than half to be able to access it so they can help me to recover and get back into it. So it needs to be signed by those two and then I can get back in. So things like that is very interesting, innovative. However, Ledger is not going to necessarily take that on, do all these different things. They know that those options are out there and they are welcome to the innovation in the space and the ideas. However, as far as basically protecting their own butts, they don't want to take on any additional liability, have uh, another layer where things could go possibly wrong, and then they assume that responsibility. So with that said, I thought it was just very cool how they did all this, the answers, and they're going back and forth. And of course, some very highly respected, some smarter people than I were on the stage speaking about security and all these different things. And one thing that I really took away from that, which I thought was pretty amazing, was the idea of how to split up these seed phrases. Meaning, let's say you have half of the seed phrase, so your seed phrase or your recovery phrase, whatever it might be, uh, called these days, they're constantly changing and evolving the name of it. It is 24 random words that is basically what generates the private key and allows people to sign. Well, if you keep 12 of those 24, let's say at home, and then the other 12 you give to the bank to put in a locked security box, or let's say you give to a, another family member or a very trusted person anywhere in the world, and you just know that you need those two things together in order to recover it. So even if somebody breaks into your house, holds you at gunpoint and tells you to give them the security for it, well, you only have half of it. So by doing that, you're going to protect your own self. And I think that was just a very good tip. And even in the case of you have, let's say, a physical guardian. So let's say you give a spouse or an, a family member or a brother, a sibling, you know, someone really well trusted that you end up giving them the backup copy. Same thing could happen there. You give 12 to one person, 12 to another person or whatever. Set up some arrangement so that basically one person doesn't have everything all at once, whether or not they want to do anything malicious or someone wants to manipulate them and use them to turn everything over, that is just one extra level of protection. So I thought that was just very interesting. And of course, the whole thing of creative ways to protect yourself and just not really just follow what everybody is doing and using passwords of one, two, three, putting it in crazy places like in Evernote or something of that nature. No, that is what you never want to do. You want to keep it offline. And even the most secure thing, is completely taking it off of any devices whatsoever and have it as what they call a paper wallet. Of course, you could put that in metal or anything that I said, but we call it a paper wallet. And that is not even a device. It cannot be connected. And the only way to access that is to punch in those seed phrases into a new ledger or a new a device to be able to sign anything. So that is just very interesting. And I really had a good time in the space. It was entertaining. Violetta came up. She sung. And of course, Fiddy was his personality, was telling jokes and what have you. So I really enjoyed it, even though it was a quote unquote boring topic. But if you are considering a ledger, they are doing uh, some specials and what have you, and especially going into Black Friday and everything coming up. I know it's just September right now, but think of this two months in advance that you can maybe put away a couple extra dollars. So if you are anyone that is really getting ready to go down this rabbit hole and or you just have been down the rabbit hole, but you don't have your hard wallet. Well, I personally like Trezor just as much, if not more than Ledger. However, Ledger has a lot more support, a lot more blockchains, including Polygon. And they have that app, which makes the whole NFT thing very easy compared to on Trezor. But definitely, if you are interested in this, I will have a link in the show notes that takes you to that. Of course, ledger.com is the only place that you should ever buy a wallet. However, if you notice, there is just a little code has a referral code. So if you do buy through that link, of course, 
$5, you're going to just support this show, support everything that I'm doing, and it's going to cost you nothing extra. But either way, whether or not you use that link or not, the referral link, just definitely make sure you are at ledger.com, L-E-D-G-E-R.com. And make sure it's authentic. Don't buy it from Amazon, Walmart, or any of those places. I don't know if Walmart sells it. I assume they do. They sell just about everything else. So get it straight from the source. No tampering, no room for error, and they're going to ship out from France, and it just it, that is the way to go. And if you're spending hundreds or thousands or millions of dollars on crypto assets, spending a few bucks here, $50, $60, or for the Nano X, you're talking a hundred and change, like nothing crazy to protect all of that. And it is well worth it. And a thing I absolutely like ledger does have some great education, whether it be in Twitter spaces or the, in the app itself. So that is a great place to start. It doesn't matter if you're an expert, someone who's been in the space for 10 years already, this is something that I think should be in your bag. So with that said, I hope you found this interesting. But as usual, I just want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.